Some people love it around here. For others, well, it might not be their cup of tea. I've heard it labelled an absolute shithole full of dodgy looking foreigners, but that's just someone's opinion. Anyway, I thought this would be a great excuse to document the area's past, present and future. Plus, have smartphones and social media destroyed the nightlife scene for guys out here on the prowl? This is Nana. Well, Nana is a bit of a mixed bag, as you know, and there are good points and there are bad points. And for the top hotels around here, it must be a bit of a tough sell trying to promote the area to visiting families or mainstream types of tourists. I mean, I've read posts on social media from people who visited Bangkok and didn't realize their hotel was right in the middle of Nana. Well, that's not to say it's all bad around here. Nana has some fantastic restaurants, pubs and bars. The shopping's great. The transportation links are good. There's a big green space just down the road, Benja Kitty Park. It's just that once the sun goes down around here, that's when the more risque stuff tends to happen and you might see things you didn't expect. Let's just say in certain parts of Nana, nighttime is when the big boys come out to play. Is Nana being gentrified before our very eyes? I think that's the wrong word. Improved, I think, is more appropriate. If you think about it, yeah, this piece of land where Ones Tower is, that was empty for about 25 years, and it was pretty ugly as well. Where Q Sukhumvit is, that was the skeleton structure of a failed 1997 development that just stood there for years and years. So that's definitely an improvement. Corner of Soy 7, you've got the JLK Tower. That probably looks better than what was there before, although, if you're having a beer at lunchtime on Soy 7, you're going to have loads of office workers looking down on you, so that could be a bit annoying. Yeah, I think the old timers are going to moan and say Nana's lo losing its old school character and vibe. Hang on just a moment. This old school character and vibe, these older guys keep going on about. Some of you younger viewers are probably thinking, what was that? What was so good about it? And how is it different to today's Nana? Well, the only way I can show you is to play some old video, show you some old photos, and then get some of your comments a bit later on. So we're going to go through some old photos now. This is a shot from 1996, before this whole area was covered by the Nana BTS station. And here's a shot from 1985, traffic heading towards Nana intersection with the famous Pepsi logo on the corner, which is now Nana Square. Here's the intersection again with the Nana Hotel straight ahead. That was opened in 1963. And of course the corner building, which still survives today. Fast forward to 2005, and here's a picture taken from a room at the Nana Hotel with the old Nana Plaza sign. And the sign was changed, I think, around 2014. This is the corner of Soy 4 in 1973. The policeman standing there controlling the traffic lights. This was before they built the police box on the corner. This photo from 1975 is quite famous. The lady walking up Sukhumvit Road in a pair of flares and the building on the left is the corner of Soy 5. This next picture was taken about 30 metres up, 1969, and you can see on the left the famous Copa Club and in the distance is the sign for the Manhattan Hotel. And here is the Copa Club which opened in 1957. Years later it became Check In 99 which was well known as a seedy bar until it was taken over in 2011 by Chris who revitalised it until its unfortunate closure in 2016. This is the corner of Soy 5 in 1985 and it shows the construction just across the road of the Landmark Hotel which opened in 1987. Now this picture was apparently taken by a GI looking out the window of the Manhattan Hotel over Sukhumvit Road. On the left there is Soy 15 and the lovely house just opposite is on the corner of Soy 12. 
Koreatown is now on the other corner and to the far left of the picture is now Times Square. A friend of mine, he came back to Bangkok after being away for 15 years and he used to love Nana. He always stayed around here. He ate, drank, socialised, partied, got laid, got scammed. He did everything you'd ever want to do in Nana except got a suit made. And when he saw how much the area had changed, he was crying. He said, what have they done to my neighbourhood, my sanctuary away from the miserable UK? Where am I going to go now? I suggested he go to Pattaya, but he said, no, this area was special to me. I had a lot of great memories around here. And every guy who comes here on holiday every year has their own idea of what makes this area special for them. So it's understandable. So why would anyone describe Nana as special? I mean, take a look around here. It's hectic day and night. The traffic is relentless. You risk your life every time you cross the street. Market stalls take up half the pavements. Touts call you out, offering you everything from sexy massage girls, ladyboy shows, trips to the floating market, dodgy tuk-tuks, taxis with broken meters, ladies of the night offering you everything from a good time to God knows whatever else. So why do these guys keep coming back? Well, you know and I know the bottom line here in Nana, it's the nightlife, the beer bars, the go-go bars, the whole process of procuring a good time, the nights of passion these guys travel halfway around the world for. Things have changed a lot over the last decade. And according to your comments, the reason for this change is smartphones and social media. Other comments mentioned there's less of a girlfriend experience. It's more of a cold, soulless transaction. A lot less interaction and attention. The women are older, less pleasing on the eye. The younger ones prefer to get their payments online, often from guys they're unlikely to meet. Whose fault is this? The love-struck guy sending the cash or the girls? You can't really blame them, can you? Some call it progress. But for the guys going to the bars night after night, maybe they've got to work a little bit harder to get the girls' attention. I'm at the very beginning of Sukhumvit Road by the railway track and once upon a time this line ran along the eastern edge of Bangkok as you can see in this map from 1917. Everything east from here was either guava plantations or rice paddies. In 1936 they constructed a road from here to Patnam, it was called Patnam Road. Then in 1950 the road was renamed after the Director General of the Department of Highways. His name was Pra Pisan Sukhumvit. And of course now, this is one of the longest roads in the country. Once upon a time, Soy too was known for Chinese squatters, guava trees, flooding. Those days are long gone and it's now one of Sukhumvit's quietest streets. There are quite a few hotels along here, some really nice houses, a couple of churches and of course the Atlanta Hotel.
Well, this was Nana's first ever hotel dating back to 1952. The interior design and architecture has been meticulously preserved through the decades. It's regularly used for film sets and photo shoots. You might be familiar with the famous sign here, and there is a story behind that, as well as a very interesting story behind the hotel itself, its guests, and of course the family who have run it for over 70 years. And I'll be featuring this story in a future video. Awesome and amazing are words you probably won't hear in this video. I'll leave that to the experts. Nor will I be outraged at what I see being sold on the market stalls or the kind of people who loiter up and down the pavements once the sun goes down. We all know who they are. We all know what they're offering. We don't need to partake. You can moan as much as you want on social media and say the police ought to do more crackdowns, but most people know that Nana is pretty much a law unto itself, and I don't want to be sued for defamation. Is Nana a safe place after dark? It's about 9 p.m. and walking up and down here, you get the impression that there could be dodgy business around, especially when you see the kind of people hanging around. But statistics prove that this area is actually quite safe. So I'm going to walk around and ask a few people. Would you say it's a safe place for tourists to walk around at night? Yes, absolutely maybe one of the safest capital in the world. But like you mentioned, when we are crossing the road or zebra crossing, even there, if there is a green man, we should look to the left, to the right, to the left and the right. Maybe the car don't stop and there will be an accident. So I prefer to stop and, and look and watch if the car will stop for me. If not, I wait. Very understandable, I agree yes. with you on that. So, would you say there's more chance of being hit by a car than somebody trying to mug you for your money? Absolutely. I think if people are a little bit careful, like when they're carrying a wallet or like a handbag, a little bit careful for snatching or pickpocketing. But I'm coming to Thailand for almost 19 years. I've never experienced pickpocketing, never. Jorma, do you think Nana is a safe place for a foreign lady to be walking around at night? Yes and no. I mean, I don't think it's that unsafe here. Yes, of course, there's a chance that something's going to happen. There's a lot of drunk dudes here, no doubt about it. What do you think is going to happen? Maybe somebody will come up and try to talk to you, try to pick you up, but I don't think anybody would actually mean any harm. I've never seen anything go down out here. The Chinese TikToker last <laughs> week was complaining that Nana was a dangerous place for foreign women to be walking around. I've seen the video, you've seen the video. Yeah. Do you think she was doing that just for clicks? Because the police certainly weren't too happy with what she was saying. They said she was defaming a tourist attraction here in Thailand, which apparently is against the law. What do you say to that? Yeah, I, I have to agree with the cops here. I mean, the video was total horse shit. I saw it. I mean, she's obviously setting up there, staging herself in a miniskirt, where hookers stand, and then complaining when the occasional guy comes up and uh, asks her how much. It was obviously staged. Hey, look, we all do it in the YouTube game. You know, we hop on a trend, and right now the trend in China is shitting on Thailand. So people can get a lot of clicks that way. 
One thing I've found here, and I haven't been here that long, but if you make it into the newspaper, you're fucked. They're going to kill you. They're going to string you up, and they're going to make an example out of you. So don't get in the news. That's my advice to you. Brian, you've been walking around this evening. You've come to Nana many times. Would you say this is a dangerous area for foreign tourists to walk around in? No, not really at all. It's perfectly fine for a walk in the evening. A little bit busy, a little bit, you know, you got the red light stuff going on, but it's not dangerous by any means. The things I'm worried about most here are getting a taxi is going to rip me off or trying to cross the street. What about late at night when people are drunk, the bars are closing and the pubs are kicking out? Have you ever witnessed any altercations between foreign tourists and locals? I, I can't say that I have. The most I've seen is uh, someone running out on their tab and the staff chasing after them. Did they catch him? No, never found the guy. How are you doing, Sam? Good, thank you. How about you? Well, I'm tired because I've been running around Nana trying to find a good Indian food place that does it extra spicy, but I couldn't, so I thought I'd come here. How's business? Yeah, business is okay, thank you, yeah. Uh, tourists are coming and, of course, uh, local people's local people that's what we rely on so yeah they are supporting us yeah you got anything planned for new year i think uh, we have a plan to do uh, a buffet on the first weekend of new year so 2024 january first weekend okay we got this idea right if people come here and mention this video what do they get something special they get a lassi a mango lassi that's our speciality too complimentary if anybody mentions about this video or you yourself yeah okay i know we're not really in nana but i thought i had to come anyway sam thanks very much thank you very much pleasure to have you again sir thank you You could say Soy 4 has two health extremes, one at each end of the street. At the top end, you've got the bars and the pubs, places where you could potentially lose your money, your pride, your dignity, and damage your liver if you drink every night. But at the other end, you've got a place where you could improve your health, Benja Kitty Park, walking, jogging, cycling. And I was just about to say, and get some fresh air, but the air in Bangkok is pretty bad at the moment. And if you're out long enough in it, like I am, you get an itchy throat and you might start coughing. And that is just about enough to make you run to the nearest bar and grab yourself a cold beer. The bottom end of Sukhumvit Soy 4 no longer has the gates to the Thailand tobacco monopoly. It's a through road now, and you've got the entrance to Benja Kitty Park. But the real reason why I came down here is because someone advised me to visit this place where there were supernatural vibes. And he said, come and sit here for a couple of hours and see what you can pick up. Well, you're probably familiar with this location. I have filmed a couple of videos here in the last year. And if you do come down here, it is very polite to slip the security guard 100 baht so he lets you in. A lot of people come here to take photos, which is understandable because it is a pretty famous film set. Now, this is where they filmed the Serpent TV series about the serial killer Charles Sabraj. This swimming pool and the apartment building behind me stood in for Canet House, where he used to live in the 1970s, and that was in Soy Saladeng in Ceylon. 
So whoever told me to come here and try and pick up any supernatural vibes probably didn't realise that this was just a film set and not the actual place where any crime took place. Although looking around at some of the balconies up here and the clothes hanging up, there's definitely some crimes of fashion going on around here. When I came to Soy One in the first Nana video, everything was pretty much closed down around here except the hospital. And I showed you the former location of the infamous Golden Palace Hotel, which closed its doors around 2012. Nowadays, things are pretty much back to normal. Most of the hotels and hostels have reopened their doors and there's even a few tourists milling around. Anyway, at the end of the Soy, there's a staircase that takes you onto the footpath by the Klong San Seb Canal. And if you take a left, you'll see on the right-hand side the very elegant Wat Makassan. Well, this temple is the only temple around the lower Sukhumvit area and there's actually more churches around here than temples which I thought was interesting. Anyway, I've walked so many times along this canal that I can tell when the water's dirty or clean. There is a bit of a smell off it at the moment but it's actually quite clean, it's grey green. When it's really dirty it goes to a dark grey. Anyway, if you carry on walking along this path you'll come to several slum communities. One of them has just vacated a load of shacks that are almost collapsing into the water and just around the corner from them living either side of a narrow and dirty canal is the Chalam Anasorn community and then parallel to them is the Ma Chim community. They live either side of the railway tracks and these are both offshoots of the original Klong Toy communities and in the 1960s when it was getting very overcrowded in Klong Toy these two communities walked up the railway tracks and settled here around 1961. There's still plenty of 1960s era hotels going strong here in Nana, places that were purposely built for GIs on R&R from the Vietnam War from the mid-60s to the early 1970s. The US military made up a huge chunk of tourist numbers back then and they stayed at places like the Grace Hotel, the Nana Hotel, the Raja, the Park Hotel which is now closed by the way, the Miami, the Manhattan, there's probably quite a few more. The Federal Hotel on Soy 11 was apparently a hangout for the CIA and a meeting place for the Secret Service. The Atlanta Hotel was a little bit higher class, they only had officers staying here but according to my research the most notorious was the Chavalit Hotel where there was all sorts of weird goings on and when the US military left they sent a bill to the US government for one million dollars in damages. This hotel later became the ambassador and here's a bit of interesting history for you. In 1985, the Ambassador Hotel had the first ever coupon food court in Thailand. It was called Bang Kapi Terrace. Anyway, all these hotels back then had coffee shops, bars, discos where GIs hung out. And just up the road was New Petrobury Road. They called it the Golden Mile or the American Strip. It was a purpose-built extension to Petchbury Road where there were lots of bars, pubs, clubs, discos, massage parlours and restaurants specifically for the US military.
Well, the first office tower to be built in Nana was the Krung Thai Bank headquarters back in 1982, and it's still going strong after almost 42 years and some pretty nice Christmas and New Year decorations as well. Well, I'm here in the heart of Soy 11, an area that has undergone quite a few changes in recent times. And if you haven't been here for, say, five or six years, you might get a bit of a shock because it looks like they've demolished almost half the street. They're planning to build this hotel retail complex. And judging by the architecture and design, it's neither new or innovative. It's just going to increase traffic around here. But hey, that's progress, isn't it? In the old days, Soy 11 had a great party and social scene. It was the kind of place you would come and have a real late night adventure. There were loads of bars, pubs, clubs, restaurants, street food stalls, pop-up cocktail bars, places where you could eat, drink, party, socialize, dance well into the early hours. Nowadays, it's definitely different. There are still places you can eat, drink and dance, but the area is definitely a shadow of its former self. When they built the Trendy building here about 15 years ago, I always thought it was a bit of a letdown. Sorry if you live here or you work here, but I'm sure it's really nice inside. But the design looks like it was done in about two minutes, probably by the son of some high so who got the job as a favor. And there's only ever two reasons why I've come to Soy 13 now. And one is to watch the occasional game at the Sportsman, and the other is to grab a bite to eat at the German beer house. But further down, there are some nice condos to rent. And if you walk to the very end, you come to the pier for the Klong San Seb canal boat. Well, this part of Sukhumit Road, just after Soy 13, in front of the Sofitel Hotel, there's lots going on. It's about 9.30 and there's lots of taxis lined up with broken meters down here and you've got ladies of the night hanging around there's market stalls selling vapes sex toys all that kind of thing you've got the Fermé which is getting busy just down here that opened in 1966 and if you saw my first Nana video you'll know that I covered the complete history of the Fermé so I thought to freshen things up a bit I'll call in Nana nightlife veteran and best-selling crime fiction writer Christopher G Moore There was a Turkish bathhouse, a massage parlor, and the Therme was a coffee shop be below the uh, massage parlor, which was almost like an afterthought because the uh, most immediate business was the massage parlor upstairs. So it became an afternight spot, very, very popular. I mean, it's before my time. In 1966, it was a an R&R &R place for uh, Americans who were fighting in the Vietnam War. 
they would go there. By the time I arrived in the late 80s, early 90s, there was a different crowd, mainly journalists. They would go after work at the Bangkok Post. They would finish the shift, go there. So you'd see a lot of regular people who were there to share a drink with colleagues. Maybe they would be interested in a girl, maybe not. But it was a very different kind of experience. Like for example, the women were not, I mean, they were freelance in the sense that, yes, they would go with a guy. But they were, all of them were looking for a husband. But at, at the time, it was a different kind of ritual because it was a different Bangkok, a different scene, different people. It was only later when the old Therme was demolished in 1996, which is going back almost 30 years now. It's still there under uh, the, the same name, but in terms of the, the vibe, yeah. the clientele, and the interest that you would have in that clientele. But it's much more part of a standalone, single purpose nightlife place. As before, it was, that was a component, but it wasn't the only component. And that's a, that's a big shift. One, one of the reasons I kept going back to the Therme uh, was I started to have an idea for a book which came out in 1991 called A Killing Smile. And A Killing Smile is set in the old Therme. The goal was to capture the experience of what it was to be in that venue during that time. When the old place was being demolished, I happened to be going past and noticed the old booths were outside on, in a big rubbish dump. So I rang my friend, Norm Smith, and I said, Norm, bring a box cutter. Don't ask why. <laughs> so Norm, with the skill of a surgeon, basically stripped the booth of the uh, naga hide, this here. Right. So, so there is a piece of the old therme, the old booths in the therme, which are inside the book. Here, I'll show you. So that's what's limited about this edition. Yeah. It's got a piece. It's got, it's got a piece of the old therme. Of the old chair. Of the old chair, plus uh, a, a letter of authenticity that indeed it does from the old chair, signed by Norm and me. And so there it is. You have a limited edition of something that can never be done again. This book has been re reprinted many times, but there's only one special edition. Can I have a look at that? Sure. So, so this would have DNA of some GI in the late 60s? I, I can't guarantee that. <laughs> it could be sent to a, a specialized lab to do kind of uh, archaeology of the past to see whose DNA is left. Part of the experience of the Thermae, of the storytelling that's in this book, is captured in a special edition. You have the storytelling, and you have a piece of where that story actually was set. So this story is probably best told at night because it is a pretty dark episode in the history of Nana. So how can I start this? Well, if you're under 45, you're probably too young to remember Sukhumvit Square. So let's take the timeline back from the present day to Sukhumvit Square. So the corner of Soy 10, there's a development just started construction called 10th Avenue. And the land that it sits on has had a bit of a turbulent history. Most recently, it was a place called Art Box, which was an outdoor market with food stalls. Before that, it was a green space called Chewit Park. And before that, it was a ramshackle collection of beer bars called Sukhumvit Square. Now, the transition from beer bars to green space was not smooth. And on the night of the 26th of January 2003, 
an incident occurred that will be forever etched into the history of Nana and Sukhumvit. Here's a couple of clips filmed in 1993. The first one is looking up towards Asok. This clip is looking back the other way towards what is now Nana BTS station. And a lot of the buildings in this picture from 30 years ago are pretty much the same now. Soy 3, Soy 3 slash 1, also known as the Arab Quarter, or Soy Arab as some people call it. It came to life in the early 1970s when lots of Middle Eastern families came here and opened up businesses and shops. This area was hit pretty hard by COVID. Quite a few shops and restaurants had to close and it's a little bit quieter around here. But if you want an alternative choice of things to eat, it's definitely a place I recommend. My favorite is a place called Petra. They do Yemeni food and I'll leave a link to that in the description. Well, the area under here used to be called Soy Zero. And for many years now, there's not much been going on around here. Once upon a time though, this was party central with lots of bars, pubs, pop-up drink stalls, food stalls, and some pretty nasty toilets. There used to be a big sign at the front that said Soy Zero, but for a while it was also known as Buckskin Joe's Village. So there we are, that's an alternative look at the Nana area, the history and the future. Hope you enjoyed it, I hope you found it exciting and educational as well. Please do subscribe if you haven't already done so. If you want to support me and support the channel, you can do so via the Buy Me A Coffee link on the screen or you can join the channel and become a member. That just leaves me to say thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.